Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum to anyone who may be tuning into the short video and hello as well to anyone who may be passing by. Today I'm going to be discussing some of the content of this book that I brought out called Shi'i Spirituality for the 21st Century which is available on my website www.onlineshiastudies.com I'll also put the link uh, below this video if you would like to get it. And this is a lecture that I gave uh, several years ago and it was called The Ethics of Brotherhood in Islam According to Amir Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. <clears throat> Amir al-Mu'mineen meaning the prince of believe believers or the leader of believers. The ethics and the concept of brotherhood in Islam is one of the things that attracted me to Islam. This is a sacred brotherhood. So again, this is something that you won't really hear much about in the mainstream media. But Muslims are encouraged to have a certain ethics of conduct uh, towards each other, both between men and women. It should be based upon courtesy and respect, loyalty, supporting one, one another, helping one another, especially those who may be orphaned or who may be homeless as well. When I came into Islam over 20 years ago, I was able to reflect upon this sense of brotherhood that existed in the Muslim majority countries that I was visiting back then and to compare that to the kind of slightly cold-hearted individualistic culture that was in Britain at the time and which is still a little bit there. Um, people do mean well but there's still this kind of perhaps lack of awareness or lack of consciousness of the needs of the other person or how you should give to the other person. In Muslim major majority countries, uh, you tend to find that there is a sense of honor and a, a liking and a pleasure in giving to the guest or giving to the other person. Uh, so just to pick up on some of the points in this chapter, the ethics of brotherhood, um, I wrote that the ethics and spirit of brotherhood are one of the foundations of Islam and an integral part of walaya, consisting of love, love and loyalty. So we have this concept uh, within Islam, which is walaya, and uh, the fifth imam, Imam Muhammad al-Bakr, peace be upon him, said that walaya is the foundation of Islam. Walaya has many dimensions to it, it has many meanings to it. The root meaning of the word walaya is closeness. Uh, so we have uh, walaya between ourselves and the divine. We are trying to cultivate this relationship of closeness and intimacy with the divine, with that which brought us into existence. And we are also trying to cultivate closeness and intimacy in a sense of family and sacred community with those who also are part of this community and this of course will build a stronger community. Over the last 150 years we can see that what has given people a sense of unity has been the inculcation of nationalism. But nationalism can also cause divisions, especially as we know during the colonial period and leading up to the uh, post-colonial period. Countries were given artificial borders and lines were drawn in the sand that actually divided families and divided communities and created an artificial sense of belonging. So we have an artificial sense of what it is to be Syrian or an artificial sense of what it is to be Lebanese or an artificial sense of what it is to be English or an artificial sense of what it is to be British or French and so on and so forth. Whereas uh, within Islam, technically anyone who is a Muslim, we have some obligation 
towards that person. There are also obligations to non-Muslims, uh, but today I'm just going to talk about brotherhood and obligations uh, between Muslims themselves. So here we see that the first example of the ethics of brotherhood can be seen uh, in the bond that existed between the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his successor, Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. And we can also see that uh, the Holy Prophet and after that, Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, worked very hard to try to inculcate this sense of brotherhood among the Muslims and to remind them of the importance of this bond of brotherhood uh, as well. So uh, we can see that uh, in the Holy Quran, chapter 49, verse 10, it says, Bismillah rahman rahim indeed, the believers are brothers, so make peace between your brothers and be wary of Allah so that you may receive his mercy. And we also find that there are many narrations uh, in the Islamic tradition that speak of the sacred nature of the bonds of brotherhood. So the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said, looking at the brother you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worship. In speaking of the Holy Prophet himself, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, has said, through him Allah buried mutual rancor and put off the flames of revolt. Through him, Allah gave them affection like brothers and separated those who were together through unbelief. So uh, this is just a few minutes to reflect upon the importance of the, I could say the phenomenon or the institution of sacred brotherhood within Islam. And uh, we can see that Imam Ali, peace be upon him, has spoken about love or mahabba. Uh, which is worth reflecting upon in light of the rivalries and jealousies that exist among or existed among the people of his community. Both the Holy Prophet and his successor, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, lived through a lot of turmoil and they lived through a lot of tribal rivalries and hatred and jealousy and the attempt to inculcate brotherhood between people was an attempt to create a more unified society that is based upon this idea of walaya, uh, sacred love and sacred brotherhood. Of course Islam has this reputation of having been spread by the sword so to speak, uh, but when we actually look at what the aims and objectives were of the Holy Prophet's mission that was to unify, initially to unify the tribes that existed within Arabia and to spread that unification uh, further afield outside of Arabia as well. Uh, and so we see, for example, uh, in the book Nahj al which is a compilation of sermons and lectures given by Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, where he says to one of his men on the battlefield, uh, if one of you is feeling weak on the battlefield, then help him. Because had Allah wished, he could have made the situation different and made the strong one weak and the weak one strong. So this is a very interesting thought to reflect upon that far from having this idea of uh, you know the survival of the fittest and praising the strongest and trampling upon the weak part of the ethics of brotherhood in islam is to support the weak the quran stresses supporting the orphan uh, supporting the person who is homeless and to remind ourselves that we are only maybe a hair's breadth away from having everything taken away from us and from ourselves ending up in a weak position where we are then obliged to depend upon other people for their mercy and kindness. So these are just a few thoughts and inshallah I will be posting up more videos on this particular uh, lecture on the ethics of brotherhood in Islam. 
Uh, this is something that I wanted to reflect upon today and to remind us all, especially in these times of turmoil and division, to try to maybe take one or two small actions to try to strength, strengthen the bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood uh, between each other. And of course, to strengthen the bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood to non-Muslims as well, because that is part of the ethics of brotherhood, that we try to create a society consisting of people who may have different religions, but nevertheless, there are what in a, are, in, are in effect peace treaties between diff different groups where they respect each other and um, they even may assist each other as well. 